All right guys, hey, welcome. Um, in this video, in this episode, we're going to be talking about and hooking up and starting to program my DMX uh, uh, moving head uh, spotlights. So, it's this guy right here. All right, this guy right here. All right, this is a uh, off-band and generic DMX controlled moving spot head. All right, it is has two options to be either 13 channel or 11 channel. We're using it as an 11 channel DMX control. It has DMX in and out, power switch, and um, your um, power cord. In the front, you have a digital display where you can change the channel. You can put it in automatic mode and do some stuff just uh, kind of like a static type. Um, all right, last night I spent uh, quite a bit of time getting this thing, I'll get to them actually, getting these connected to my computer and uh, configured properly in the light around software so I can then um, program. I was actually able to program one song as well. Being the first song, it did a very minimal programming job with them um, and it takes quite a bit of time to program these but I'm sure once I get used to um, how they program and, and try to tweak and customize uh, the program themselves, uh, it should take be a lot quicker. All right. Um, just want to let you know about these guys. I bought two of them as a pack on eBay for $120. And they do come with a mount that you can screw onto the bottom to hang them upside down as well. They are not weatherproof. They're for really indoor use only. However, I'm going to be using these outdoor. And one of the reasons that I decided to go cheap is because I, first of all, didn't want to spend a lot of money invested in DMX if I wasn't going, I didn't like the way it looked or programmed or didn't want to use it. Uh, and number two, I don't want to spend a lot of money on a indoor light basically and put it outdoor and get it ruined. So this year is really a test season. Um, I am planning on putting this outside, standing upright like this, and I'm going to put a aquarium over top just like I'm doing with my projector. I'm going to put aquarium over top. It's completely glass all the way around. This way it can shine right through the glass and I don't have to worry about uh, rain or, or anything getting to it. Now, um, I'll show you what I built out there, when I built it out there. Um, I've got a couple things because I, I don't live in a bad neighborhood, but if I'm spinning, I'm putting a, you know, a projector out there and a couple moving head DMX lights, it's a lot of money when you're sitting out in the yard, especially overnight and possibly when I'm not home. So I'll be doing some stuff to, to secure it and to uh, guarantee their safety. So I'll let you know what I do there. But let's go ahead and get these things hooked up, plugged in, and uh, show you what you gotta do to make sure you can control these guys with your LiDARAMA software. In this case, just while I program and demonstrate, it's gonna be sitting on the floor in my office. I've got the other one sitting right over there. All right, just the power cord and then the DMX in and out. These are three prong DMX cables, or uh, XTL, I think they're called. I might be wrong, who knows, who cares. All right, but uh, if I go over here to the display, this one here is actually the second one. So you'll see it starts at channel 12. The first one says A001. It starts at channel one, running them in 13 channel, I'm sorry, 11 channel mode. Um, so this one will start at channel 12, okay? So if you have stacked, it doesn't matter which one's first, which one's second, you want to make sure that if I put this on channel one, and that one's on channel one, when I program channel one on DMX, both of them will do the same thing. But I have that one over there programmed on channel one. This one, channel one through 11. This one starts channel 12 through 22. So when I program channel 12, 13, 40, 50, all the way to 22, this one will do what I want. 1 through 11, that'll do what I want. And again, I've just got the DMX cord coming in and then out of here going into that one. They're both plugged in. Now, on the computer side, we have a DMX 3 prong cable coming to this guy. All right. This is a device that's going to be required for you to control your DMX using your LiDARAMA software. Intex Open DMX USB. This device sold brand new on the website, on, on their actual manufacturer's website, is $70. I was able to purchase this on eBay for $50. I'm going to assume it's used. I don't know, but it seems to work fine. It doesn't matter to me. 
if you open up this port, I showed it to you in one of the earlier videos, but uh, let's see if I can pop this open. You have a five pin DMX output. All right, and the one I got at least came with a five pin to three pin converter. Okay, on the, if you open that up, it'll be three pin. So we've got the uh, NTEC uh, USB to DMX converter here. It's obviously plugged in with an Ethernet port to get the, the um, back of the computer. Now, the first step you want to do is you want to go ahead and install the driver for the, uh, the device. You plug it into the computer, it'll automatically recognize it, and it'll start to um, look for that driver. Now, basically what we want to do is just, uh, let's go ahead and open this and just type in NTEC Open DMX Driver Download. I've already actually done this, obviously, since mine is working okay. And as you can see, if we open the website that we're actually going to, um, I guess my internet's running a little slow today. There's your DMX guy. Okay. Um, again, if you buy it from the website here, it is seventy dollars. All right. But it does give you your uh, where's it at driver. There's your driver download. And then you just open the program and download that driver. So. Um, once you get that installed and recognized on the computer, the next step will be to uh, go ahead and open up your uh, Lighterama sequence editor and close this function out. Okay. Normally when you open up your uh, sequence editor, it's going to come up with this window. In this case, because this will be the first time we're setting this up, we just go ahead and open up a new animation sequence and just leave whatever basic comes up. It doesn't really matter. Now, we have eight basic channels. This is default for the lighter Rama. I'm going to right click unit one and let's go ahead and insert device. Insert the device above is what we'll do in this case. And it tells you we want to add a device. We'll, put, we'll name it DMX, DMX Universe. All right, and in this case, I have 22 channels I'm going to be using. The options are 16, 32, 48, 64, and so on and so forth. So we want to include the minimum a number of channels to, to, to cover what we have. So 32 channels will suffice. Now in this case, when I'm using, I'm using the DMX moving head lights, DJ lights basically, um, I'm not going to be creating any RGB channels. I'm not, this is not hooking up a, uh, RGB controller through DMX or anything that most likely will happen for me anyway next year once I get a little bit uh, do something different with my show and probably happen next year. So right now I'm just adding 32 channels, no RBT channels or anything like that. So hit OK. And also one thing I didn't mention, there was an option for a group, and I, that option was selected. So you notice on the screen here that the DMX is actually all grouped together. All of those 32 channels are grouped together in one group. Okay, so we open this up and it actually expands the 32 channels. Okay. Now the only channels that will work in this scenario is going to be channels 1 through 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way to 32 aren't going to do anything because there's no channels there. So what we can do is we can go ahead and go through and delete those channels if we want. I'm not going to waste your time and do that now. All right. All right, before we go any further, um, what, we're going to, what I want to do is go to edit. Go to Preferences, and let's go to Network Preferences. It'll open up the Network Preference, and most, in most of the cases, it's going to look like this. Okay. Um, you're going to have a selection for Lightarama, DMX, and Miscellaneous. Obviously, you want to go into your DMX setting. You want to drop down the adapter, and you should see the adapter showing up on the list because it is now installed and running on your computer. Okay. Now, I had the hardest time. I'll give you full disclosure. I don't know why it happened to me, but I had the hardest time getting this to appear on this, this computer last night. And what it happened to be is a message came up the first time, and I just you know, I was so excited to get them up and running. I just clicked the message, hit OK. I didn't read the message. So after troubleshooting, I finally 
just closed everything down, uninstalled everything, and reinstalled it. And that message came back up, and I read that it said something about the lighter Rama was communication on COM port three, and uh, your DMX can't con communicate on that port, or the blah, 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 I don't know some some sort of message. So what I went. And I did is I went to Lightarama and I went ahead and deleted the communications port three that uh, I was using last year for my Lightarama uh, convert whatever 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 the case may be I forgot the name of it so I deleted that and then I went ahead and I went to DMX and then boom there it was it was available on the list protocols raw DMX and then you want to hit apply okay. You can honestly do this before you create your channel, uh, your channel configuration. Uh, and what I suggest you do that, once you to apply, a message will come up asking you to restart all Lightarama software to apply the settings. And uh, that's why I suggest maybe going into your network preferences and doing that before you set up your channel configuration. All right, but it's already running, everything's running good for me here. Now we're going to want to take this time and go through the owner's manual that came with your um, your device. The one I got actually gives me a whole list of what every channel does. Channel one adjusts the level left to right. Okay. Channel two does the fine tuning of the level. Channel three goes vertical up and down, and then four is fine tuning. Five is speed. That's how quickly the the, the moving head will move. Um, Channel six is overall dimming of the lights, okay? All four lights that are on this thing. Seven will adjust the speed of the strobe. Eight is my red color dimming. Channel nine is my green color dimming. Channel 10 is blue dimming. And channel 11 is white dimming, all right? If I use the 13 channel mode, channel 12 will be self-propelled, which I'm not sure exactly what that is. And that might be like a automatic mode or something, and then channel 13 would be a reset. I'm not going to use those two channels, so I just went and changed it to the 11 channel mode. So, um, Once you go through all that, and uh, you have relabeled, not how you would label, if you don't already know how to label your channels, is you just click on them, you can change the color, you can change the device type, U-verse, address, all that fun stuff, and also the name of the channel. So. With mine, channel one is going to be my left DMX, and it's going to be left and right. You know, they call it level, but I call it left and right. It just makes sense to me, so I just did left and right. Actually, did this capitalized. Left and right on my left device, I believe it was, and I kept the color. I actually turned the color pink or whatever, because it's a color that I'm not going to ever use in a show. So. Um, and go, you can hit OK, and that name right up here will change. Um, so you know when you're programming what you're trying to do. There's export, import, channel configuration. Now I've already saved the channel configuration for this DMX, so I want to import my channel configuration. And there it is 2017 Halloween. So I clicked on that. It loads it, and what I've got is my one DMX Universe One group. It has 22 select channels. Okay, and I also have one 16 box light around because that's what I'm going to be using for um, for uh, this for my home, just one box. Okay, DMX is a little different than just standard zero to one hundred percent on a Lightarama programming. So if you have some familiar, some experience with a Lightarama software and how to program a box, DMX is slightly different. Um, there's a little tool up here if you go to um, Edit Preferences. There's a selection here where it says DMX Preference, and you can allow DMX editing. Okay. Um, when it brings up, if you hit the DMX button up here, it'll actually bring up a, device, a little bar, a little um, toolbar of sorts that gives you um, some settings of DMX intensity levels. Normal Lightarama intensity levels are zero to 100%, right? Zero being completely off, 100% being completely on, and you can fade between that. You can still use that, that method for um, DMX controlled devices, however, some DMX, more detailed, more advanced DMX controllers or lights 
will have a specific number. If you want that specific BOGO, let's say these things had a specific BOGO to choose from, that BOGO will be, in the owner's manual, they'll say if you want like the moon BOGO, you can go to intensity level, uh, you know, 108 on channel three, and that will flip that BOGO to that right channel. So when it comes to that, you can't guess by zero to 100% on the intensity level and just hope you hit the right place, but you can actually go to the DMX intensity settings, pick the number you actually want, and make sure that that DMX control device is locked in on that channel to that exact intensity level to make sure that you're getting the right BOGO in this case, uh, or GOBO, I think it's called BOGO, I think it's called a GOBO. Um, or, uh, you know, every channel in this case, if I go to zero, intensity is actually going to be on my level if I look here this is from this is my my uh, vertical up and down this one right here zero is actually pointing down 28 is straight out 128 is straight up and then if I continue all the way to 255 it's going to be all the way in the back side pointing down on the back side okay and in this case here this is from my left to right all the way to the left is 86 all the way to the right is actually zero. Right in the middle is about 43, okay? So what I'm doing with these lights, let's just say this is the road and I'm pointing towards a house. My DMX lights are only gonna be pointing from complete right to complete left towards the house. And they're only gonna be pointing when it comes to vertical from slightly down into the yard all the way to straight up. I'm not gonna go back and towards the people that are in the street or anybody watching. Two reasons, number one, I don't want to blind or shine the lights into anybody's neighbor's house or anything like that across the street. Number two reason is I'm going to have a, a block, uh, something built around it to hide the lights, to protect the lights, and to give a better function. If you can actually see the light bulb shining, then you will less likely be able to see the beam that's shining off of that light. So I'm going to basically hide it and it looks like these lights are just coming out of a box, basically. So I have played around with the intensities and I've determined what level I need for what position I want these lights to be pointed at. All right, that would be your first step. And uh, obviously do that is to get your lights connect connected to, to Lightarama and start playing with it. So if I wanted to do my, um, my left to right left channel at, I already know it, but I was playing around with it. I want it to be at 43%. And I want uh, my vertical, let's just say, to be at uh, 88%, which is about, you know, not completely up. So I'll go vertical 88%. All right. And uh, just a bit of advice, you always want, in this case, in my case, I always want my dimming to be at 100%, because if that's off, my lights will never come on. That's like a master power switch for all the lights. Even if I have my red dimming channel all the way on and my main dimming is all the way off, it's not gonna, it's, it overrides that. So it's like a master control for my lights. And then let's turn on uh, my white light, okay? So in this case, now this is just the first guy over there. All right, if I wanted to copy and paste this, I'll go and copy it for my channels 12 through 22. And if I play this, exact thing. All right, so they're on. You can see that they're pointed straight towards the house because in this in this example and how I have them set up, this is the house. Okay, so straighting straight towards the house, which I wanted, which was this intensity of 43 from left to right. And they're pointing not straight up, but not straight forward. They're pointing at, I think it was 88 in, uh, in intensity on DMX control, which is basically shining up. And you can see that they're full brightness on white and white only. Okay. So <clears throat> in this case, you've got to keep in mind that number one, we've got 12 or no, 11 channels to program for one light, which includes left and right, vertical, color, dimming, strobe, and which color you want. All right, so 
with light arama it's just channel one on, channel two off, whatever, blink, shimmer, no big deal. But with this, it's a lot of extra programming. So if I want my lights to move and to, and to uh, fade and blink and twinkle and different, th do different things, it's a lot, a lot of detailed programming. So what I'm finding out is what we're gonna do is there's, there's one main thing that I'm using a lot of. So if I want this light to go from 88 to straightforward, which is 28, okay, I need to go, let's just start right here. Right now, uh, left to right, we'll keep it the same. Right here, this mark is 88%. If you ever wanna know, you just hold, let your mouse sit there for a second, I'll tell you exactly what the percentage is. And we wanna go from 88 to 28. We're gonna bring our DMX control up. We're gonna select 28. And I want it to go down over four beats or whatever, whatever that may be, click it there. All right, everything in the middle is off. So if I let this play, it would go 88, it would go to zero. And then right when I hit 28, it would come back to 28. But if I want it to gradually go down over that time, you start with 88, you end with 28, go into the middle anywhere and hit the A key on your button and it will automatically gradually, this is the uh, IntelliFade tool, all right, it's a shortcut key for the IntelliFade, and it'll take it from wherever it was to wherever you want it in between those two devices. So in this case, in this case, it'll go from 88 to 28 and that over that period of time, okay? So let's go ahead and keep this one, which was at uh, 43, and let's go to um, let's go from 43 to 86 over the same period. Go over one hit A, it'll gradually bring it that up. And that okay, we'll keep everything else the same. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, copy, and paste here. Now, it's hard to tell, but let's see if I, I'm going to go ahead and play it, and we can kind of hopefully see what these things are doing. Uh, hit play. All right, you can see what they did. Oh, still playing. Let me try it. Let me stop it and play it one more time. All right, that's the first little bit. Now that you see how they're moving and moving where they need to be and then they turn off because I stopped programming. So, even though it takes forever to figure this out and to program, it's a really cool, really cool feature, a lot of cool things to try to, to figure out. Now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to go over to a pro video that I've already programmed, very, very minimal programming, and I'll tell you from, with all honesty, that this took me probably about two to three hours to program. So, let's see what I've already done. Well, I've tried to set this up to a certain way where you can kind of see what the lights are doing and actually watch the controller itself move. There's a lot of times, there's a lot of empty spaces in this in this song where these guys aren't going to be on or are or playing. So, um, I'm only going to play it just a little bit, but you can kind of see what uh, what these things do and what I can. You know, very very basic. I'm not an expert yet. I probably will never be one, but. I just wanted to kind of show you what I did. And like I said, this this little bit, well, I've done the whole song, but this little bit of programming it took me quite a while to do. So I'm going to start it up. As of right now, obviously, there's nothing happening in this part of the, this song. Now keep in mind the house is gonna have 16 channels of light arama programming and also it's gonna have the video pro or the video projection up on the house. So hopefully this will just add a, a level of uh, you know just a, a, a nice pop, an extra. Got this other one going, doing this kind of the same thing, but opposite on this side. Oh, oh, sorry. Now 
Now in this song I only used red, blue, and white. I didn't use any green. You know, right now, this is the resting position. This is where it always goes to when there's nothing programmed, when there's nothing on. Okay. As you can see, the other one's doing the same thing. So that's it. Now, once I learn a little bit more about this uh, DMX and any shortcuts that I find um, with the programming, I'll obviously let you guys know. Um, one thing you must need to know about this. Now, you can always program the DMX all you want with any version of software, even the demo version. However, you need the advanced or higher version of Lightarama software to control DMX control uh, devices. So make sure you keep that in mind. I had to drop $40 to upgrade my software to do this. However, now I'm good for pretty much any DMX and, and actually adding more Lightarama boxes if I wanted to. Um, I'm gonna end this video here. I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully, um, you know, we're going on this journey together. I don't know if any of you have ever done this, but uh, this really opens up a door to a lot of other uh, RGB floods or uh, moving head spotlight, anything that's DMX controlled now. It just, all I need is to, all I need is to buy the lights and all I, and some DMX cables and I can add them to it. There's, um, definitely a lot that I can do with this so I'm really excited um, hopefully you know I'll get a hang of the programming and things will flow a little bit quicker a little bit smoother um, just to let you know especially for Christmas there's going to be a couple things that I'm going to want to highlight with these DMX uh, spotlights uh, I had planned on getting a giant dis disco ball a mirror ball put on top of my Christmas tree this year outside the tower tree and I want to be able to have these spotlights programmed to a certain time where I, if I wanted them just on the disco ball that they would all I have to do is okay I need to go to 48 and 68 and boom and it's right there it's pointed at it um, so what that's going to require me to do is make sure that once these devices are in place that they're definitely set and in place perfectly and they don't move okay um, I could program it all at one in here but put it out there and now the angles are off so when I'm doing generic stuff like this, no big deal. They're just going and doing random things. But if I want to pinpoint a specific spot or device or something, which I had thought about putting some something mirrored, maybe even a couple of disco balls at the eaves that can spin in different directions, maybe vertically or whatever, I need to know precisely where I need to shine these guys um, to hit those. So, um, got a lot of stuff to do, and I'm. I'm thinking initially I'm going to have plenty of time to do it, but I'm afraid that I'm going to be running out of time. So that's why I'm going to continue to pump out these videos and work on the stuff over the next few days. I'm probably going to start getting things in place outside and I got to start seriously programming for Lightarama. So um, anyway, like, subscribe, stay tuned, more videos to come. Thanks.